Today we will be going over interpretation of restorative dental material. So this PowerPoint is an incredibly important PowerPoint for you to understand and know the information, so please take your time and feel free to ask me or email me any questions that you may have. This stuff is going to come up over and over again countless times, both in lab and for the rest of your life, needing to make sure that you know what you're looking at. So please just make sure you, you pay extra close attention here, especially if you want to do well in the final, because this is going to be a lot of the stuff that we do for interpretation. Now before we get started, as a review, you want to make sure you remember what radiopaque and radiolucent restorations are going to look like. Because here everything's going to be kind of in comparison. So most of the restorative material is going to be more radiopaque than the enamel or the dentin's already going to be. However, it's going some of the restorative material is going to be more radiopaque than others. So for example, anything that's metallic restoration, so things like amalgam, things like gold, are going to absorb way more x-rays than materials such as like composite or porcelain. So as a result, on a very metallic restorations, very little, if any, radiation is going to come in contact with the receptor. Thus, those are going to appear very radiopaque, almost completely white on a dental radiograph, whereas composite or porcelain is going to be a little bit closer to the enamel. So to start, we'll start with restoration. So it's going to be your composites, your amalgam, and gold. So first your composites, so composites that tooth colored restorative material that you see here, these anterior teeth, here on these anterior teeth. So when viewed on a dental image, a composite restoration may vary in appearance. So it may be radiolucent, it's a slightly radiopaque, and it all depends on the composition of the composite material. So if you look here, so we can see this composite material is more radiopaque than the enamel, Whereas this composite material almost looks like decay when it's not. It's not decay, it's just a very, um, probably older composite. More older composites usually had less filler material, which led to them being more radiolucent, less dense. Now they add more filling material, just so that you can distinguish them a little bit better. So the way that you can best tell that this is a composite and not decay is just you can see how distinct everything is, very distinct margins here. Whereas, you know, decay is going to appear more like a V-shaped area through the enamel. So this is what your composite restorations are going to look like. And you can remember, too, if you're not sure if it's composite or if it's a different color material, composite is going to have a nice, very smooth outline. So the composites are going to be a nice, smooth outline. And they're also usually, if you're finding a restoration on an anterior tooth, we can probably assume that it's composite. Because who wants to have a big amalgam restoration on tooth number eight or tooth number nine? So usually if you see something on the anterior, you can, you can safely assume that it's going to be composite. Next we have amalgam restorations. So our amalgam restorations are going to appear very radiopaque. So if you see something that's bright, bright white with jagged margins, you can assume it's an amalgam. So a one surface amalgam restoration will appear as a distinct, small, round radiopacy, whereas, whereas larger two or three surface amalgams are going to appear radiopaque and are characterized by their irregular outlines or borders. So here we see our round, very radiopaque areas of amalgam. And here on our multi-surface amalgams, we know they're amalgam because you could see these jagged lines, jagged borders. So with our composite, remember we had nice smooth borders, amalgam is going to be a bit more jagged. So again, if you're not sure if you're looking at amalgam or composite, start putting all those pieces together. So am I very bright white or am I slightly radiolucent? Am I jagged borders or do I have very regular smooth borders? Am I in the anterior or am I in the posterior? So these are things you can put together to decide if it's amalgam or composite. So when you have amalgam, what you can sometimes see on a radiograph is what's called an amalgam overhang. So amalgam overhangs are extensions of amalgam beyond the crown portion of the tooth in the interproximal region. So an amalgam overhang is not something we like to see because it disrupts the natural cleansing of the contour of the tooth. Thus it can trap food and becomes what we call a plaque trap and can contribute in also to bone loss or caries. 
So in order to prevent this, obviously when we catch amalgam overhangs on our radiographs so that they can be removed and replaced with a restoration that has better contour. So I look at my radiograph here. I see on tooth number four, I have an amalgam with this big overhang here. I can also see on this restoration that this patient is definitely not a flosser. And they probably haven't been to the dentist in a long time. I can see these huge calculus wings on either side of the teeth. They look like they're about to fly out of the pockets here. You can see these big pieces of calculus. But then here is our amalgam overhang. With amalgam, you can also have what's called an amalgam fragment. So these are fragments of amalgam that may be embedded in adjacent soft tissue during the restoration of a tooth. So amalgam fragments or scraps vary in size and shape and appear as dense radiopacities with an irregular borders of a dental image. So you can see here, here's our amalgam fragments. Now sometimes you can also see this appearing clinically. So here you might see some amalgam fragment. But when I look at this image, I have to say what caused me to have amalgam fragments embedded here. So I can kind of see it looks like there's some amalgam up here, but what would cause it to get embedded there? So what often happens is if amalgam fragments are displaced into soft tissue during the placement or removal of amalgam restorations, so if a tooth is extracted and it has amalgam, or if an amalgam restoration is replaced with a different colored restoration, or if an amalgam is replaced with a crown, you can have some permanent area of pigmentation known as an amalgam tattoo in that area. Another type of restoration you can have, you can have a gold inlay or onlay. So here in the picture, these are what are called gold inlays, whereas here in the radiograph here, we have a gold onlay. So the onlay you can see here on this maxillary premolar, you can see very distinct borders. So how do I know that this is not an amalgam? So I know this is not amalgam because look how distinct these borders are. They're not irregular, they're not jagged, they're very nice, distinct, smooth borders covering the entire tooth. If I had amalgam, I would probably have more jagged borders. If I have a one surface gold foil restoration, however, so if this was just a one surface gold, there would be no way radiographically for you to know whether or not it was amalgam or gold, so that's something you would have to look in the patient's mouth clinically to see. So next we'll be going over crowns. This will definitely, definitely be on your final exam, it will be on your midterm, and this will show up countless times in interpretation. So please, please, please know these four different types of crowns and then what a post and core is for. So the first type of crown we'll go over is gold. So not only is gold used for inlays, onlays, and foil restorations, it's also used as a crown material. So a gold crown is going to appear as a large radiopaque restoration with smooth borders. A gold restoration is going to appear, appear completely radiopaque. So unlike amalgam, it'll be nice and smooth. So here we have our gold crown. So nice smooth borders covering the entire surface of the tooth. Whereas you can see around it, these are all amalgam restorations that we can see. You can see amalgam restorations, they're jagged. So I see here, this is an M-O-D amalgam. Here I again have an M. Oh, amalgam. Oh, and look here. I can see we have some interproximal caries between these teeth here. Most likely incipient on the distal here of 14, and it looks to me like some moderate on the mesial of 15. So when I look at this radiograph, this is a great one. This is something that you might see either in clinic or you might see on an interpretation quiz. So if I were to give you this image and I were to ask you, what is a restorative material found on tooth number 19? I would want to know that this is just all you need to write is that it's a gold crown. If I were to give you the question, however, identify the restorative material on tooth number 14, I want to know not only that this is amalgam, I want the surfaces too. So it's important as you're studying these to know that this is not just an amalgam, this is an MO, a mesial occlusal amalgam. The next type of crown we'll go over is stainless steel. So stainless steel crowns appear radiopaque, although they're not quite as dense or radiopaque as the gold is going to be. So they're usually termed as see-through on a radiograph, so you can almost see right through them. The outlines and margins are going to appear very smooth and regular, but often when you see these crowns, 
you're not going to see them well contoured to the tooth. So typically they're not going to be fit to the tooth quite as well as a regular crown would be. And that's usually because they're a cheaper material. So stainless steel isn't usually used on a permanent tooth to last. It's usually used on children on like a primary tooth if they were going to lose the tooth eventually or if it's just a temporary fix for a shorter period of time. So here on tooth number 30, I have my stainless steel crown. So notice it's not perfectly fit to the tooth. So hopefully this is just a temporary crown because we already know what can happen to a crown if it isn't properly contoured to the tooth. We can get bone loss and it can become a plaque trap. Here we have a picture. You can see the arrow pointing to a stainless steel crown. This is what it would look like clinically. So the next type of crown that we'll go over is a porcelain crown. So all porcelain crowns and bridges appear slightly radiopaque on a, on a dental image. So when you're looking at these radiographs, so this radiograph, every single one of these teeth has a porcelain crown. This tooth here, this is a porcelain crown. How do I know that this is a porcelain crown? We can see this white, slightly more radiopaque area here. So that thin radiopaque line outlining the prepared tooth is evident and slightly more radiopaque than the crown. So that's how we know if we're looking at porcelain crown. And usually that, that line is just a cement or some other dental adhesive material that we use to adhere the crown to the tooth. So again, you're most commonly going to see this because of the whiter material. You'll see this mostly on anterior teeth. You can also see this a lot on posterior teeth. They're becoming popular. Different offices do have machines that can make porcelain crowns in office. So they're definitely ones that you want to be keeping your eyes open for. And then our last type of crown is going to be our porcelain fused to metal crown. So the porcelain fused to metal crown, when you're viewing it on a dental image, is going to have two different components. So it's going to have a metal component that's going to appear completely radiopaque. And then the porcelain component will appear slightly radiopaque, so it's almost like a little hazy band outside of the metal. So if we're looking at this image here, so tooth number nine, I can see I have a porcelain fused to metal crown. So how do I know that this is porcelain fused to metal? Because I have my metal portion with this hazy outline. This hazy outline is the porcelain, so porcelain fused to metal. So over in this dental image again, this is a great one to really study when you're studying for your exams and you're studying for clinic. So up here on my maxilla, I have a fixed bridge up here. So remember our different types of bridges. So this is going to be a fixed bridge. So where do I have my abutments? So take a look, look at your tooth numbers. What teeth here do I have abutments on? So I have an abutment here on tooth number 11. And then I have another abutment, tooth number 13. And then over here, tooth number 15. And then my pontix, which is where just this little fake tooth in the middle is going to be, are on tooth numbers 12 and 14. I also know that my porcelain fused to metal bridge is porcelain fused to metal because I have this metal area on the inside and this kind of hazy area on the outside. So this is going to be a porcelain fused to metal bridge. Then I'm going to look at the crowns on the bottom here. So I know this is a crown because it's covering the entire portion of the tooth. So both of these teeth here, we have 18 and 19, covered entirely by a crown. So if I go through my list, I know that these crowns aren't porcelain fused metal or PFMs because I see the radiopaque portion, but there is no radiolucency above them. So I have no hazy area, so it's not porcelain fused metal. I also know it's not porcelain because it's very radiopaque. Porcelain is going to be a little bit more radiolucent. I also know it's not stainless steel because it's perfectly contoured to the margins of the tooth. So that leads me to believe that this is a gold crown. So these are gold crowns, and I assume that because of my regular borders and my very radiopaque appearance. When I look at these two teeth here, so when I look at 20 and 21, I'm going to assume that these are amalgams. I have my very radiopaque areas with jagged borders. So when I look here at tooth number 20, I have a M-O-D amalgam. And then here on tooth number 21, I don't see anything on the mesial aspect of this tooth, so I have a D-O amalgam. The next thing that's important to know about some crowns is that 
Potion core restorations can be found on teeth that have been treated with endodontic therapy. So a lot of times when you see a crown and the tooth with a root canal, you're also going to see a cast post and core. So post and core restorations appear radiopaque on a dental image. So the core portion of the restoration resembles the prepared portion of the tooth crown. So that would be found more up here. And then the post portion extends into the pulp chamber reef. So you'll find that down here. So when you see teeth that have been treated endodontically, you want to check to see if you have this more radiopaque area here under the crown. It's going to be your cast post and core with the crown on top. So now we have some other materials to go over as well. So another material you can find radiographically is going to be your base material. So a base material can be a number of things. It could be zinc phosphate cement. It could be zinc oxide eugenol paste. Um, it can be a number of things, which you're going to learn about over the summer when you take dental materials. And these are all used as cavity liners to protect the pulp of the tooth after they've had a restoration. So base materials are placed on the floor of the cavity preparation. And a restorative material, such as amalgam, is then placed over the base material. So a base material is going to usually appear radiopaque. However, compared with amalgam, sometimes the base material will appear less radiopaque, so it will appear a bit more radiolucent. So we have here on this image, I have tooth number 19. So I have my amalgam restoration and underneath it, I have this slightly radiopaque area, but it's less radiopaque than the amalgam. It's known as a base material. Next we have metallic pins. And metallic pins are used to enhance the retention of amalgam or composites. They're going to appear as a cylindrical or screw-shaped radiopacity on a dental image. So here, if I look at this image, I've got my pin here, attaching this restoration. And when I look in this image here, here's my other metallic pin I have attaching this restoration over here. So next, going over endodontic treatment. When you have endodontic treatment, typically there's two different materials that you're going to see that are used for on the root canal. So it can be either gutta percha or silver points. So when you're looking at gutta percha, it's more of a rubber-like material that's used to fill the canal of the pulp. When it's compared with other metallic restorations, it's a little bit less radiopaque, but it's obviously more radiopaque than the pulp chamber would be. So this is the one you'll most commonly see. So we can see here when we look at this image, here's our gutta percha. So it's just slightly more radiopaque. So when I look at this dental image, there's another thing I want you to be looking at too. So I want you to see, so we've got some areas, we have some composite restorations here. So here I am looking at tooth number 18. We can see here, we can't just follow the entire enamel around. You can see we have this very slightly more radiopaque area here. So we've got DO, and I don't see anything on the mesial, so this is a DO composite. And then here on 20 and 21, these are important to notice as well. Do you notice we have these buccal class 5 composites on tooth numbers 20 and 21? So we probably had either some root caries here. Maybe we had treatment for some abfractive lesions here as well. And we can assume they're on the buccal surface, even though we can't tell buccal or lingual, because typically that is where you're going to see composite restorations such as these ones in the buccal class 5. So make sure you're looking out for things like this as well when you're looking at radiographs. They're definitely easy to miss. So our other type of endodontic treatment you can have are silver points for a root canal. So silver points can also be used to fill the canal of the pulp. They're going to be highly radiopaque, so more similar to the metallic materials. They're definitely going to appear much more radiopaque than the gutta percha is, but you're not going to see them quite as often as you're going to see gutta percha. Gutta percha you'll see much more frequently than you will them. So now let's look at this tooth. Let's look at the crown here. We had to determine what kind of crown this is. If we went through our list, we know it's not gold because it's got this hazy outline to it. So even though it's very radiopaque in the middle, we have a hazy border on the outside. It's too radiopaque to be silver, and it's definitely too radiopaque to be porcelain. However, this hazy area 
is light enough to be porcelain. Thus, we know this is a PFM or a porcelain fused metal crown. We have porcelain in the middle, or porcelain on the outside and metal on the inside. So, porcelain fused to metal crown. So, these are just things, these are in your book. You don't have to spend a great deal of time with them because if you take a panoramic radiograph with a denture in, you're really not looking for too, too much. Sometimes they'll be left in just so the patient has something easier to bite on. But just know if you do accidentally take one or you see a radiograph with a denture in, and just like, like the appearance of the teeth on the denture are going to make it look like the teeth in the denture are floating. Same thing here. You can see by leaving this partial in, you can't see any of the anatomy. It's very radiopaque, so you wouldn't leave a partial in for most radiographs. The only time you would leave a partial in and it might show up slightly is if you were taking a full set of radiographs and you needed your patient to bite down. When you're taking your mandibular PAs, you might leave in their maxillary partial. And when you're taking their maxillary PAs, you will leave in their mandibular partial. But that by no means indicates that you should ever see the partial in a radiograph. So it's very uncommon that you will. What you might be more common to see is a lingual bar. So a lingual bar or any orthodontic treatment is going to appear more radiopaque. So usually using metallic materials. You may see implants. So implants are going to appear almost like a screw. So you can have more than one sometimes, depending on the patient. They can have endosteal implants. Um, depending on their shapes and designs, they can be all different. Um, depends on the manufacturer. They're always made out of more of a metallic material, so they'll appear more radiopaque. So you can see here, we've got a patient who has a lot of implants. Here we just have patients with one. Again, I don't anticipate most people seeing this, but it is good to know if a patient is having implant treatment, you might be able to see, and this is using computed um, comb bean technology because you wouldn't necessarily see a bone graft on any other type of radiograph, but they are growing in popularity as more people are getting implants. So it is good to know that if someone is getting an implant, it will be important if they don't have enough bone in the area to make sure that they get a graft, a bone graft, and if they are to get one, they might be sent out for a cone beam radiograph, which is something we'll go over later in class. You can also sometimes find in radiographs, if you're taking either PAs or a panoramic radiograph, if a patient's had some type of oral surgery, if they've had some drastic orthodontic treatment, maybe if they were in a severe accident, like a car accident, they may have some different fractural stabilizing material. So you can see on this top radiograph here, you can see there's some wire mesh and plates and screws on the top. On this bottom radiograph here, you see a metallic plate and screws as well. And lastly, it's important to be able to identify when we've made a little mistake. So sometimes on your radiographs, you're going to find that you left in some jewelry, you left on a patient's glasses, so again, we want to make sure that we're removing anything that might interfere with the radiographs ahead of time, but it's good to be able to be aware of what they are. So here we have a patient left in their nose ring, and down here, that patient left on their glasses. So that is not an anatomical finding. That is the patient's glasses. So please review this PowerPoint a few times. This stuff is going to come up over and over again. Please feel free to go through all the images, see what kind of restorative material you find, and Feel free to ask me any questions that you may have. Thank you and have a great rest of your day, guys.